All right, where are we at? What are we doing? What's up, YouTube? I'm Taylor at Go Power Sports. Today, we're going to show you how to build the vintage go kart kit. Racing slicks on this one, the Tillotson 212. We're going to get back to Go Power Sports and show you the build. This vintage go kart kit is perfect for adults and kids. We stretched it a little bit longer than the original Manco frames. So with that added length, you get quite a bit more leg room if you're an adult, but we didn't go too long where a kid can't hop in and drive it. The engine plate is set up perfectly. You can do the 98cc, which we now sell, or you can do a 212 or a 301. But whatever kind of torque or climbing ability you're looking for, you can achieve that with this engine plate. It's really set up very, very universal. So this is the basics of the kit that you get. With this roller frame, uh, we went with the slick tires for this build, and you get everything you need to make this a complete roller. This does not come with an engine unless you order the extreme vintage go-kart kit, which comes with a torque converter and a 212cc engine. At the end of the video, we're gonna put on a 212 with a uh, 1041 three-quarter clutch, and then we'll show you the engine mount hardware, the clutch bolt kit. This is everything you need. Everything is packed super nice. Everything is labeled so there's no confusion. We're gonna start at the front and work our way back. These are the heavy duty pedals that you get with this kit. They are pretty thick material, they are quarter inch. Here are the pedal springs and the pedal hardware. Now these are a super nice shouldered bolt. This machine part is the exact inside diameter of this hole, so you don't get any slop. Your steel is never riding on any threads. On the one end of the bolt, you're gonna use a 3 16 Allen. And then the nut, this is a 5 16 serrated nut, so you're gonna use a half inch wrench. These go on the outside. That feels super stable. You don't have any play left or right. Just really good front to back action. Okay, then next up we are going to put on the springs. Oh yeah, always. Literally always in my pocket. Okay, pedals are done. Now we're going to get all the spindle stuff and the tie rods. We're gonna put that on and keep moving back. Each tie rod comes with the jam nuts and the ends. These are left and right hand thread. So on one side you got left, one side you got right. That allows you to easily adjust your alignment once you have these bolted on. You don't have to unbolt it and then realign it and bolt it back on. So you can find out right and left hand by just spinning the nuts that are already on there. This one is right hand thread. I like to screw these in as far as they can go into the tie rod end, each side. That way we know they're at the exact same depth into each end. Then when we adjust, it'll pull out evenly from both sides. Okay. Now these spindles, they do have a left and a right. Depending on the ride height that you desire for the front end, 
you can either put the axle bolt at the top or you can flip it over and put your axle bolt at the bottom. And it's roughly an inch, maybe inch and a quarter difference. So like for the tires that we're running, running the bolt at the top, it's gonna give us a really even ride height on the frame. So these can be tricky. That went pretty easy, actually. Okay, repeat the process on the other side. Let's get the tie rod hardware. So you have two shorter bolts where your tie rods go onto the spindles. And then you have this longer bolt where you tie the two into the middle. It's gotta be longer because you're going through both tie rod ends on this steering shaft. These are all the same thread. They're all, they all match the nuts. So all three will go on, all three different bolts. So lock washer on top, lock washer on the bottom, then you put it through. That gives you a lot more turning radius. These don't bind up as easy. That lock washer works out very well. Same thing on this side, lock washer top and bottom. So you have a choice here where you tie into the steering shaft. The higher up you go, the quicker your turning response is going to be. So for like off-road, I would want it to be a little slower. So I would probably go all the way at the bottom, but for this one, we're probably gonna take these out and do some uh, like cone drills with them later. So I'm gonna come up here so we have really quick turning speed. So, lock washer on top. Bottom. And then on the bottom of this. These are 3 8 bolts, so we are going to use 9 16 inch. And you can get away with a 14 as well. If you don't have two 9 6, two 9 16 14, almost the same. Look about even. Okay, let's slap the tires on. These are offset. You have a shoulder coming off the back. It's a lot shorter on this side. So that's gonna space your tire out. Spacer goes on first. have to use the crescent. It's fine, that's what most people are gonna be using because they don't have a big old socket set. Okay, let's get the alignment a little closer. Still out. That looks good. Bring this one. Can you see that? 
You can see the tire. That'll be good for now. So we're gonna leave all this loose up front. When we get the rear tires on, then we'll make our final alignment adjustments. In theory, this seam should be in the middle. Even if it's not in the middle, it's the same all the way around. So the front right now, we're at 34 and 5 eighths. And that is 34 and a half. So we're an eighth inch out, essentially, which for high speed steering is good. A little bit of toe out. So we might actually keep them just like that. Steering wheel with the cap. And we will find the correlating hardware, steering wheel hardware. I believe these are quarter inch, yep, quarter inch bolts. So you're gonna need seven sixteenths wrenches. There we go. Are people gonna see the difference in my hand? <laughs> How did you do that? Nice. Only reason I'm using an impact is because this one is adjustable. So I got the speed way down. These are only quarter inch bolts, so you can strip them. I'm gonna double check. Perfect. And then the cap. Yeah, I like to put the seat in now because when you're running your cables, that'll give you an idea of exactly where you can route them. Super nice seat too, it smells good. All right, and we will have the seat hardware, seat vintage hardware right there. These are quarter inch bolts as well, so you'll use a 7 sixteenths. I always like to pre-start them just to make sure. Sometimes you'll have a little wood overhang Good. These holes just line up perfect too. This is super easy. This frame is made about 20 minutes from our shop right here in Fort Worth, Texas, and they do a fantastic job. They build all of our rascals, little rascals, and these, and soon to be drag frames. There we go. Make sure we're clear. There it is. Right there. Seat is in. Let's keep moving back. So from here, this is a good time to mount the axle. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is loosely put in the hangers and the bearings, and we can slide our axle in. We'll put our brake disc and sprocket in as we shimmy it in there. Bearing hanger hardware right there. Flanges, bearings. Flanges, got the bearings, and the bearing hanger 
hardware. So these locks are an eccentric lock. Can you see how that's centered? Mm -hmm. And when you turn it, it offsets. See how it's off? So after you get everything set, then you twist these and it's supposed to lock your axle down in place. And you even have a set screw too. But then we're also going to use lock collars on top of these to make sure we do not get any side to side movement at all. So we're running those out. We're going to leave these a little loose because it just makes it easier to shimmy everything in. Repeat the process on the other side. Okay. <laughs> this is the one inch axle supplied with the kit. I'm gonna slide it in just a little bit. I'm opening up the sprocket. This is the sprocket supplied with the kit. Comes with a key and two locks. I'm gonna go ahead and back those out. And the brake disc. This is a six inch live axle brake disc. Yeah, what's the difference between an axle? Um, so some go-karts have stubs on both sides, basically just like five, five eighths bolts. That makes your, on all of those, it's just a one wheel peel where one tire is being powered by the engine. This is a live axle, so everything is keyed and locked into this, giving power to both sides. Sprocket obviously goes on the left side of the engine. And then the disc. Did you drag the you're supposed to be able to throw a live axle on there, right? Yep. Yeah, it's going to be either stub or live axle. Whichever you want. Nice. We want to get our axle fairly centered, and then we're going to tighten these up. Actually, I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to measure from the tab. That's six and a quarter. Six and a quarter. Tiny bit more. Perfect. going to go ahead and lock these down. There we go. Okay, so our spacing is equal side to side. I'm going to go ahead and throw our spacers on. No hammer, no hammer required. Slaps right on there. Okay. Now the wheel, and you are supplied with a bunch of keys in this kit. I think there's six keys, and then you get keys with the uh, brake disc and sprocket too. I'm gonna go. 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna use two with each wheel. Valve stems outside. Line it up with your keyway. Boom. And then on the outside, you got a washer. And that. So for this nut, you can use a one and a sixteenth socket. Most people probably won't have that. If you don't, you can use a crescent. Just make sure you get a crescent that'll open up big enough for that. Valve stem to the outside. Beautiful. Okay, let's go ahead and get our brake caliper in place. Ooh, these are black now. Nice. That's cool. Nice. So this floats a little in these slots, which is nice because if your disc is off a little bit, then the caliper will, will compensate for that. Now we just got to line up the key, line up the keyway in both, and then work the key in there. Like that. Then we're going to put a lock collar on each side to make sure that key doesn't come out. So in the kit, you also get the lock collars, axle lock collar one inch. We're gonna put one on each side of that disc. The Allen's should be a 3 sixteenths. Yep, 3 sixteenths. Nice. Uh, repeat the process on the inside. These you kind of gotta just move the axle around until you can find a good spot to get the Allen wrench. Beautiful. So for the sprocket, we can go ahead and get the key in there, but we're not gonna set it until we get our engine on. We can align the chain. So I know it's approximately gonna be right there-ish. Okay, and we can go ahead and get our lock collars started on there, but we're gonna leave all the bolts loose. So whenever it changes gear on something, you're gonna have to take everything off. Yes. So this is one of those instances where a split sprocket. If you do know that you're gonna be messing with your gearing a lot, you might go ahead and purchase a live axle sprocket carrier 
And then with that, you can use all the different split sprockets. You, we got them in 420 and 35 chain. Big variety of tooth counts in each. Like I said, we're just starting these, letting them hang. So next up, we are going to hook up the brake cable. This is a heavy duty cable right here. This thing is nice. A lot of people used to just use like throttle cables as a brake cable. This thing is really heavy duty. Oh yeah, even the adjustments are a lot thicker and your end is really heavy. And with that, we have the cables for the vintage. Three bolts, three washers, three nuts. You need two for the brake cable and then one for the throttle cable. All right, we got our jam nut off of the end of the brake cable. Now we're going to put the cable and go right in. Get that started. I have no idea where these are gonna need to be. I'm just gonna leave all this super loose. Let's go all the way to the top. I want as much leverage as we can get on this sucker. Since my feet are going to be in here, I want the bolt head in here too, instead of the sharp threads like this. Washer and nut. These are six millimeter bolts, so you'll need 10 millimeter wrench and socket. And these, you do not want to get them tight, like on the cable. And these are nice lock nuts. We're just gonna run it down while we still have the clay. That's good. All right, how should we route this puppy? That's actually easy. That's gonna give us a weird shape. So let's go under the seat. Same thing, pop that rubber end off, take off one of the jam nuts. How does that line up? Right there's gonna look good. And like I said on the front, I want a lot of leverage on this. So I'm gonna hook it up on the top. The longer your lever, the more leverage you have pulling it. Same thing on this like we did the front. This has a really nice lock nut. See, that is too tight. So, let's back it out a tiny bit. Perfect. So from here, we can really set. This adjustment is how you run your pads in and out the tension on the disc, and then we'll adjust our cable after we do that to adjust the arm. I think I like that. That looks good. Let's run this jam that down. All right, that is good. Now, let's, uh, See what we can do with this. Let's just set those, that's approximately in the middle-ish. So we're still free. And you do want a little give before it engages. Despite how good of a driver you are, how much foot control you have, you're always having a little bit of pressure on there. So it's good to have some give. So let's see what we can do. That's a little too much for me. So let's actually, I like where this one is. Let's jam that down. And then up here, so if you come this way, you get more slack. I like that, right there. Okay. 
That's perfect. Can't get those quite tight enough by hand like I could the back, but that's why you have these little flats. Sound like it. Okay. Recheck again, always recheck when you make changes. Nice. All right, next step. Grab the throttle cable. 63 inch Manco throttle cable. Very universal cable. This won't run to a Makuni, but it works with pretty much every stock linkage that comes on the engines. Jam nuts come off. Take this one up to the top too. Run the bolt from the inside. Perfect. The throttle cable we'll really figure out once we get the engine on here. But it's going to want to go. I think we're going to run this one under the seat too. And after we're finish putting everything on and we'll really get these cables looking nice run some zip ties up under there oh yeah that'll be good okay so when we checked it before we had a little bit of toe out i'm gonna get the steering wheel straight and this bar so i do want to bring it in just a little bit more Let's go just a hair. Let's see where that puts us. 34 and 3 eighths. 34 and 3 quarters. Let's go more. Right, other way. Thirty-four and a half. So this should be really close to. 34 and a half. This is 34 and 5 eighths. So we're an eighth inch toe out. I want to try it there and see how it runs. I think it's going to run really good. So we're happy with where these are. One trick to locking these down roll both of your tie rod ends to one side because if you have one far that way and then the other rock back when you lock them down you're not going to have hardly any play in the tie rod so put them both to one side so that they're lined up and then lock it down Now you got play. So the last two things that come supplied in this kit is the kill switch and the chain. We're gonna slap this on after we put on the motor. So for now, let's get that kill switch installed. We're gonna put some ends on the kill switch. I'll show you where I like to mount them. We're gonna drill a couple holes in here. And then after that, we'll get the motor on. This is like 460 thousandths. It is 460 thousandths. So we're going to do a couple of pilot holes and then take one of them to quarter inch for our ground bolt and then take the other one to probably just end up using a half inch drill bit. Let's do this about. Get a little drill bit.
we got this big bit on here. Go ahead and deburr. Key's gonna go at the bottom. make this a lot shorter so let's get the engine on figure out exactly where we need to hook this in and then we'll trim it and put the end on so this is the Tillotson 212 cc that we run this is the pull start version we didn't really want to mess around with the electric start on this cart so we are going to put oil in it and then put the clutch on and then we're gonna put the chain on. After that, we will set our sprocket and then we'll be done. This is the 1041 clutch. It is a three quarter bore, 10 teeth for 420 chain, which is what comes with this go-kart kit. So with all the clutches, they already come with a key. Also had this clutch brought to us with the clutch mount bolt kit. It comes with a lock washer and then a big fender washer. All right, time for some oil. We are going to run our four-stroke Tillotson Racing engine oil. We run these and pretty much all of the motors that we run. Works really well, mixes with methanol really well. It's a good all around oil. Nice. Right to the threads. So with our engine, we ordered the engine mount hardware. This is the number 420 chain, and you get three feet of it. It comes with the master link already hooked on there. Pop it off. I bet we're gonna have to cut some. Maybe not. So for the clip, just imagine it's like an arrow going that way. You always want your closed end pointing forward, going with the direction of the chain. So if the chain's rotating like this, 
for you on it. Look at that. Just jam that down so we don't lose our spot when we're putting in the collars. So it looks good. Now we're going to tighten the engine bolts. So with these slots being super long, you have tons of tension for your chain. So that's probably a little too tight. With how close these are in relation to each other, you can run your chain a little loose. I like that. So these are 5 16th bolts in the engine mount kit, so you're gonna need a half inch, half inch wrench and a socket. Chain's good, alignment looks perfect. All the collars are tight, brake is tight. Okay. Last thing we have to do, which is very important, is finish wiring up the kill switch, and then we will hook up our throttle cable. Looks good. So on this kill switch, we've only got to get to this plug coming off the engine. So I like how that's routed. We want to leave a little wiggle room just in case. Now we can take that little extra slat, tuck it back in with the mount on the kill switch. And it's good to go. So kill switch is hooked up. Obviously before you know you're good to go, you want to run the motor on stands or something so it's not going to take off and actually ensure that it will kill the engine. So last but not least, I've got the throttle cable. First thing you gotta do is loosen up this nut right here. Can you see it? Loosen up this nut because they ship that super tight from the factory and you have no spring back. So if you leave that tight and your throttle's back here, you're gonna need wide open throttle. That is not good. Perfect. Then you have a Phillips head right here. You need to bust that loose. That's where your uh, cable housing is going to be clamped. And then right here, let's get this thing out of the way. You guys can see a little better. I like to just back that out enough where you can get your cable through it. I've had a bunch of those fall all the way out before and they're super hard to find and hard to get back in there. Come on. Nice. Okay. Go ahead and clamp down the housing. Here. And then the cable. 
I like to grab the end of the cable and just pull all the slack out that you can, if you can get to it. There we go. So I got all the slack pulled out. We're basically just gonna snug that up to where your cable can't move. Then come back in with the 10 mil wrench. And fully tighten it up. And back that out a tiny bit more. Perfect. I think we're done, dude. That was actually super fast. Real time, I think this took two hours to assemble without getting called away to do different things. So you're looking at, I'd say the average person, two to four hours of assembly time. And that's engine cable. I mean, that's hooking everything up. It all went super smooth. This is a really sweet kit. This is an old school looking go-kart. I mean, it's vintage, hence the name, vintage go-kart kit. It's got the old school steering, but still handles super well. Cable brackets, everything is just done really, really nice. I love the return spring on the pedals. This is a sweet kit, man. guys i hope you liked the video we walked you through the entire build of the vintage go-kart kit and showed you how it rides and handles so let us know what you think please like comment subscribe and go get you one of these kits they're selling quick all right i'm gonna go take a few more laps so you guys check it out <laughs>